perfect. So I don't have uh, any disclosures. Um, I also wanted, so I'm going to stick a lot more to the technical aspects of the procedure and I'm also going to uh, try to do it in, in the eight minutes. Um, I'd like to uh, just talk to you a little bit about, do it in the, in the setting of a case uh, of a patient. This is a lady who had a, uh, a sleeve that was twisted, right? And, and there's a reason for this that I'm, hmm. so the uh, video, I need a mouse to run the video here. No. Okay. Could you click on the video? Our, our mouse isn't working from the podium. Oh. There should be a, some video files that they told me you guys were going to. Okay, well, that. They have it or they don't? They, they're supposed to be. The, the video should have been downloaded. I checked this morning. Some video files. Anyway, I'll move forward. So basically what happened is, hopefully we'll get the rest of them. What happened was this lady had a, a twisted sleeve. And the reason I, I mentioned this is I tried stenting her early on and it looked perfect but she felt terrible and despite my warning her this was going to be awful she wanted the the stents out and the reason I mentioned this is that she basically had almost no proximal stomach at all to put a pouch to because the twist started very very proximally so I she came back wanted to talk about another stent and so what I was able to do is actually stent just a proximal part of the twist. You can see the distal piece right there. And so uh, realizing that I would eventually need to do a conversion, but that at least gave me enough stomach for a pouch. So that's something to remember is, you know, do your best to get enough proximal stomach for a pouch. And this is kind of what it looked like after I removed the stent. So now I have enough stomach um, for a proximal pouch and there's the distal part of the twist right there. You go beyond that and you get to the antrum. So now I'm going to convert her to a bypass, and of course, you go into surgery feeling like it's hopefully just laparoscopic, and this is what you see. I know everybody's been in that situation. It's a little bit of a desperate situation. Um, and hopefully my next video here will run. The first thing you've got to do is you've got to get all of those adhesions. This is supposed to be a video as well. Um, so the... Uh, the, um, the Hmm? It's, well, I don't think they downloaded the... I uploaded all of my files. I don't think they downloaded my videos, unfortunately. Video files for? Yeah, they're all on the server. I checked them this morning. Okay. He's checking them right now. So he's okay. Right. All right, very good. Well, so th this just is going to show you... This, was, this video is intended to show you that you got to get all of the adhesions and completely mobilize the, the sleeve. I actually have some pictures of what that ultimately looks like. So anteriorly, it's, you got to get it all the way... I think to the, um, uh, all the way to the uh, hiatus, gotta make sure there's not a hiatal hernia. And then lateral and posterior to the sleeve, sort of co complete mobilization. The, I think the angle of his, you have to completely mobilize that. And in a bunch of circumstances, I have found that people leave behind the first short gastric, which is right here. So you got to be cognizant of that because frequently that means there's a little bit of fundus that's left over in the sleeve, or at the very least is going to bleed if you don't if you're not if you're not cognizant that it could be there. The other thing that I like to do is I like to make sure here's a completely mobilized sleeve with an endoscope in there, and I've gone all the way to the lesser curvature over here, and the um, and I've made sure that I preserve my left gastric pedicle. Uh, for subsequent um, for a subsequent gastric bypass, when you look here, so it was it was hard to see here. It looked like a great sleeve, right? But once I got it completely mobilized, you can see here where the actual stricture. So it's strictured right here and kind of folded in on itself. Um, so my first thought was, could I do a stricture plasty? Could I resect the middle? And so that was the first bright idea, right? You open it up a little bit, 
And then I realized that the two sides were sort of stuck together. So this is the other hint here is just because you can you open up the stricture doesn't necessarily mean you've undone the undone the twist or or undone the stricture, you've got to look inside because here, actually the, the two walls, either posterior and anterior, or the two curvature sides, I'm not sure which, were kind of stuck together. Maybe they got caught in a staple line in the original procedure. But converting to a bypass, and I'll try to move along um, quickly, so it's another video that's not working. Um, I apologize, but with, with the gastric bypass, um, there are a couple things, and, and this video was going to show you opening the lesser curvature. Now, we'd done the, all the posterior dissection so that things should be quite clear. And once I see the left gastric, ah, there we go. Thank goodness. Once I see the left gastric, I take it. I also, um, like Professor Hempens, believe, believe that you should have the biggest staple load you can find. And I actually will use staple line reinforcement along with... Um, along with, with the biggest staple load I can, I can get a, my hand on. Make sure the left gastric's okay. And then um, for these, I usually like to put my anastomosis posteriorly, so I'll clear off the posterior pouch um, and just to where I get to the, uh, to the vessels on the lesser curvature. Um, and this is where I'm, gonna, where I'm planning to put my anastomosis. So... Can, I, can we go back to the presentation, please? So the next step is I'm going to make a, a rule, um, you know, a rule limb, and because I didn't want to belabor the point, um, we just divide the jejunum, make our enterotomies, staple it, close it. Um, always close the mes I always close the mesenteric defect, and I place my rule limbs in the retrocolic position. So the, the next step then is to make the, uh, the gastrojejunostomy, um, which uh, um, that video should be called GJ perhaps. Let's see if it. Well, the, the points that I was going to show you is I, I do, I'll do this in two layers. The, uh, the, I do it with, with all absorbable sutures. I typically do my gastrojejunostomies, the inner layer being um, a, uh, a linear staple layer. But for this case, um, I actually uh, chose to use, um, chose to hand sew it uh, because I knew that I had not that much pouch left. I mean, basically this posterior suture line was at the esophagus. And so I wanted to make sure that it didn't get a staple misfire. I could fit the stapler in. There weren't going to be any issues. I just didn't think I was going to get another chance to, uh, to kind of, to kind of get this fixed. So, um, the next step then is after you, you do all of that is what to do about the distal stomach. My opinion is that, um, that, the, that the distal stomach, especially when we kind of cut out the hole, if it's, if it's a very small amount of antrum left, my preference is to remove it so that you don't have unopposed gastrin release. I know that other folks say if the gastric pouch is small enough, you don't have to do that, but I, I choose to do it. And, uh, and this is, um, and so I, I start mobilizing um, the, uh, the, the, antral remnant, uh, get the duodenum all mobilized. Um, obviously, the things to be very careful about is, is once you sort of start seeing the pancreas show up here, is within the next couple of bites, the gastroduodenal vessels, there they are right there, are going to show up. And so that's the key because um, that will change the complexion of your operation relatively quickly. Um, unfortunately, I've been in that situation. And once you, once you get all of that mobilized, again, you know, what to do about the staple loads. I actually am a, I'm a big chicken, so I try to, I use the staple loads with the three staple rows, the biggest one I can find, and with reinforcement. And then not only do I do that, but after I'm done with, uh, after I'm done stapling it, and you can see the gastrojejunostomy sort of sitting here in the background. After I'm done with all that, um, just 
probably doesn't make a big difference, but I actually will put a, uh, a fibrin sealant on the duodenum. Not sure if, that's, if that does anything or not, but I can tell you um, it's worked for me. So the, the next, so in summary, uh, I think the first thing is to make sure you completely mobilize the sleeve. Get that first short gastric and make sure the left gastric is protected. Make sure you have enough proximal pouch. Sometimes that might mean doing um, a stent ahead of time. Uh, the longer staple height, reinforcement, sealant if you need to. And then finally, what to do about the, the, distal, the distal stomach. Um, do you resect it or do you leave it? And if you resect it, just make sure you're very careful about the anatomy of the gastroduodenal artery. Thank you very much, and I apologize for going.